she had to be successful, she had to pay them. The English administrators in Ireland were firmly entrenched in the main port of Galway City and squeezing high taxes from the O'Malley shipping trade. Up the coast in Clue Bay, Grace was about to become a thorn in the side of the all-powerful English Navy. Grace began extracting fees from the increasing traffic of merchant ships under English protection, sailing through O'Malley territory. Her great advantage was her knowledge of the unusual geography of Clue Bay. With over 300 islands, it is a maze of hidden inlets and narrow channels. The inner bay is shallow, and in the rapid change in depth from high to low tide, the submerged sandbars and rocks became death traps for ships who dared to take on Grace in her home waters. Grace had several large ocean-going galleys in her fleet, but one of the most effective weapons amongst the islands were the smaller, locally built workboats. In these quick and highly maneuverable sailing craft, Grace and her men would attack in numbers. Lying in wait, Grace would pounce on the larger, less maneuverable ships like hornets swarming over their larger prey. The English, who considered all of the ocean the property of Queen Elizabeth, called Grace's activities piracy. Grace saw it as the family right, and the O'Malley trade was booming. She was quickly earning a reputation among the rival English captains as a chief director and commander of thieves and murderers at sea. Grace's father, Black Oak, died when she was in her late twenties, and his daughter, already the commander of the fleet and a mother of three, staked her claim to take his place as chieftain. In terms of becoming a chieftain, in Gaelic Ireland, no woman could become a chieftain. But Grace O'Malley simply took what was denied her by law, and she said, well, I am a chieftain. I have earned my right to be a chieftain, and if the law doesn't like it, well, then that's tough on the law. Grace was excelling in a man's world. She fought with them, and she went to sea with them for months on end. But it would be a mistake to think that she was simply living a man's life. There were many sides to Grace, and some of them were all women. The feminine side of Grace O'Malley is very, very interesting. We know for a fact that she had at least one lover in her life, and there is a suggestion that she may have had an illegitimate child. It was a very liberal society in many respects. The Christian ethos here was interpreted in a totally different way that was intended by the Roman church. So everybody gave it a very wide interpretation in their own personal lives. She's very much part of her culture and part of her background, and I don't see any reason why she wouldn't have availed of um, such things as having a relationship outside marriage if it suited and when it suited her own purposes. Legend fills in the details of one of Grace's romantic conquests. She had word of a ship that had founded off Ackle Head in a storm. Setting out with her men, they scoured the coast, looking for the spoils of the wreck that had washed up among the rocks. Grace came across a nearly drowned man, a foreigner by the name of Hugh de Lacey, thought to be the son of a wealthy merchant. Grace decided that he was worth salvaging. 
Taking Hugh back to Clare Island, she nursed him back to health and they became lovers. So you have Grace O'Malley very much as a woman, enjoying really the fulfillment of her womanhood to its nth degree. In a way, she was a really a fully rounded human being when you think of it. She had both sides to her, the male and the female side, uh, and really, I suppose, enjoyed both to their fullest extent. I'm sure that Hugh couldn't believe his luck falling into the arms of a formidable woman like Grace. Unfortunately, their passion was short-lived. Just a few months into their affair, Hugh fell victim to intertribal feuding. One day, Hugh was out hunting on the mainland when men from a rival clan, the McMahons, stalked him down and ambushed him. Grace was devastated. The McMahons were about to feel her wrath. She immediately hunted down and killed the men responsible for Hugh's death. But still, she wasn't satisfied. Gathering her warriors, she sailed to the McMahon stronghold of Duna in Black Sod Bay to the south. And attacked their castle. among rival clans for castles, land, and cattle was commonplace. The idea of Ireland as a country didn't exist in this feudal world. Because she was a woman, Grace was constantly tested by her rivals, but they underestimated her at their peril. She routed the McMahons and installed her followers in their castle, earning a new nickname, the Dark Lady of Duna. Grace was reaching the height of her power. Grace was the consummate underdog, and securing her little empire was a fight every step of the way. Weapons expert Martin Merlihan gave me a hands-on demonstration of Grace's favorite tools of the trade. So Martin, how's your guts, man? <laughs> yeah, they're all there. <laughs> so do you think Grace could have held her own with a sword? Oh, yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. She was trained from an early age to use these weapons, and then she would have been good. Probably put some men to shame as well. And she fought with two swords? Um, yeah, it was, it was the armament of most of the warriors of that period, at that time. Used together, they were lethal. These are much lighter and shorter than other swords that I've used. Yes, I mean, they were ideal for fighting for on board ships where you hadn't got much space to manoeuvre for you doing combat. Inside castles, fighting inside castles are much easier, the shorter, the lighter the weapon. And if they're guerrilla tactics, tactics in forests and in bogs, you don't have to be tra trailing around a dirty, great big, heavy weapon and you know, small weapons like that, light weapons. Right. They were ideal. If it's not about brute strength, then what did she need? Speed and agility and a um, little bit of common sense. Not so much standing toe to toe and trying to hack your opponent down. Getting an opening, getting the sword in, getting the knife in, killing, getting out quick. That's yep. what it was about. <laughs> okay, you, you yeah. <laughs>